I was 22. born on January 11, 1922, in Summit, Oregon. And my brothers and sisters were all quite a bit older than I was. My youngest sister was 10 years older than I was. And when the last time I saw the house I was born in, it was being used as a goat shed. And it's completely fallen down now, nothing but blackberry briars. The roads were almost impassable in the wintertime because they were only dirt roads. There weren't any, even any gravel roads till we got to Blodgett. And uh, so whenever they went any place in the car, um, they carried axes and shovels and burlap bags and cut branches and trees and you were very careful to pick your rut because you were going to be in it for the next eight miles at least. And I have seen cars when I was a little kid mired down to the body of the car and people out with shovels digging them out. Well, the depression was, for a little kid, I had enough to eat but it was, I'm sure, at the expense of my parents. They would, um, I know that they would save things for me and if there was something left on my plate, Daddy always said I didn't have to eat it because he'd eat it. And I realize now that he was probably not full. We ate a lot of tomatoes, Mama canned, raised and canned tomatoes, and we ate a lot of beans, and she could make a pound of bacon go a long ways by making gravy and they always had a garden, but it was, I, and of course my bro, two brothers-in-law always had wild meat, which they shared with us, even though it wasn't in season, but everybody, the game wardens were all very understanding. If they took meat and used it all, they had a tendency to turn a blind eye toward it. Um, I know when I was in high school I had one dress and my grandma had just got a pension of eighty dollars a month and she gave mama a dollar and a quarter to go buy me a dress because I didn't have anything decent to wear to high school and uh, I hated it but I washed it at night and ironed it in the morning and wore it the second day. <laughs> On Christmas morning, I got a set of tiddlywinks and a beach ball with a patch on it. And I was telling my friends that it was used, but it was still good. And my mother overheard them say that, and heard me say that. And she said, what made you think it was used? And I said, well, it had a patch on it. <clears throat> and she said, well, we were playing with it, and our dog Jip bit a hole in it. They had to patch it with a tire patching. And when I went to work for the post office, I was getting $3.86 an hour, and I thought I had the world by the tail. <laughs> that was so much money. It's more than I ever got for anything. We went to Baltimore, and my husband worked in the shipyards at Baltimore until he got a call from a man in Philomath, Oregon, wanting him to come back and work for him in the woods, which was, you had priorities in the jobs. You couldn't quit a job and go to work for a job that was lower priority. You had to work up. And by going back to the woods, the woods had more um, priority than the shipyards. So he could go to work in the woods. And um, he asked us how much money we would need to come back to Oregon to work for him. And Kenneth said he thought we could do it with $200 plus his, ship, his uh, paycheck from the shipyards. And the day we were to leave Baltimore, it snowed three feet, which never does in Baltimore, and they were not prepared. They had no snow plows or anything. So we had to wait three more days, and we drove across the country in a 1934 Chevrolet, 1931 Chevrolet. with two little boys, 
with the standard shift and they weren't very big cars then and we had beds in the back seat for the boys and uh, I drove nights and Kenneth drove days and we stopped one night coming across the United States. It took us six days and we got one night's sleep. Kenneth slept nights and I drove and t took care of the babies in the daytime, napped when I could when they were asleep and that was about all the sleep I got. When we got to Hood River at nine o'clock one night, it's about an hour and a half from Portland, and it was before the new highway on the river. It was the scenic highway up on the mountain, and it took us from nine o'clock in the evening till 6.30 the next morning to get to Portland because we were so dead for sleep we couldn't keep our eyes open. And it was too cold to stop, and we couldn't stop and leave the car running for heat because of little boys in the back seat. So we just had to keep going about 20, 25 miles an hour. And Kenneth hit the guardrail twice, but we were going so slow it didn't. And we got to Falmouth with a dollar, I'm sorry, we got to Portland with a dollar and 30 cents. So we were very adventurous. Whenever we went someplace, we counted on him and flat tires because we couldn't afford a jack, <laughs> and so Kenneth would pick up the bumper, get a hold of the bumper and pick it up while I shoved a block of wood under the axle. <laughs> and we changed the tire, took the inner tube out, passed the inner tube, pumped the tire up, brought the inner tube back up, put it back in the tire and put it back on the car and away we went. <laughs> we were young and foolish. I was a three-plate welder, which means I did flat, vertical, and overhead welding. And it took me three days to learn to hold the arc because every time I'd strike the arc, my hand would automatically fly up in the air. And when I finally was able to hold the arc, then I could weld. And I would slip into the shipyard early for my shift and get two what they called cracker boxes, which were the motors that ran the welders, and hook them together, which wasn't supposed to be done, but that way my welds held. I had more power. And uh, it was so cold in that assembly shop. It was just bitterly cold in the summertime. And because of the, all the illnesses and everything, by that time we had three children. and. There were so many children in Vanport um, that we decided to send the little boys to a farm with some friends for the summer and then a neighbor lady took care of Carolyn. And um, that way we managed. <laughs>